Hi, and welcome to this PowerShell quick tip video. This quick tip video is actually going to focus a little bit more on kind of a module than a commandlet. We're going to be taking a look at the PS Windows update module. Now I'm going to be doing this on a Windows 10 box because my server box is actually fully up to date, so I won't be able to do any demonstrations on it. But there are some updates that I can perform to my Windows 11 box here. So we're going to do the updates, but just be aware that you can actually use this on a server OS as well as Windows 10 or Windows 11. And you can actually completely use this to automate your updates on your servers. It's actually how I actually perform updates on my servers as well. Now you can obviously add a lot of logic to the script that I'm about to show you guys. This is just a very, very basic example. You can definitely add some filtering on the type of updates that you want to do as well. Now, typically I don't do driver updates automated, but today, because it's the only updates that I can perform on this box, we're going to perform an update on a driver using this PowerShell module. So first off, the first thing you're going to want to do is actually, of course, install the module. So let's go ahead and let's perform a install module. And it's going to be install dash module and we're going to install the module called ps windows update and once you actually run this here now i already have it installed on my computer typically you would get a prompt that's going to ask you are you sure you want to install from the gallery and then you're going to want to enter the letter a which is going to be yes to all and then you're going to proceed and it's going to install and then the only thing that we have to do is change the word install module to import module. And we're going to import that module so we can actually start working with it. Now, typically um, what we're going to do is we're actually going to build out the script and I'm going to describe the different commandlets as we come by them. Um, but you can definitely use these commandlets completely on their own in a PowerShell terminal. This is just going to be a script that's going to let you automate your updates in a specific fashion. So let's go ahead and let's create our variable here. We're going to create this as a server name variable. And this is because we want to actually log all of our updates this way. If we want to see what's been done to the computer on what date, we will actually have a very, very good log of this. So what I like to do is create a variable called server name, and we're going to make that equal to the environment variable computer name. Now, this is just so we can actually copy this script to multiple other machines and not have to worry about changing the actual name of the machine in the script. And then the other variable that we really need is the log path. Now, this is where we're actually going to be storing the log files here. So what I like to do is I like to just copy the path to the folder itself here. And we are going to name the update log file as update log dash server name dash. And here we're going to put a variable wrapper here. We're going to do a get date and we're going to make sure that we format it with two lowercase d's, two uppercase m's, and then four lowercase y's all with dashes in between those dot txt so it's going to create a text file for our logs here so if we actually look at our log path here we're going to see that it shows me the update log my computer name and today's date which is july 2nd of 2024 and then what i like to do is create one other variable here we're going to call it update list and we're going to make that as an empty array here so that's just going to be a ampersand and then the open and close parentheses here. Now you can definitely create that as an array list to make it more efficient. I just kind of make it as an array because I know that the update list isn't going to be very long. I know we're going to be collapsing and we're recreating, which is inefficient. But in this scenario, we don't really need to worry about it because we're not going to be dealing with lists of 10,000, 50,000 updates here you're probably going to be dealing with at most maybe a dozen updates if it's a system that's really out of date there maybe a couple dozen i wouldn't see it very high because a lot of the updates are cumulative updates these days and then what we're going to do is we're going to do our update list is going to be a plus equals get 
dash w list and then we want to make sure that we're adding a parameter called microsoft update now this is what's actually going to be getting our updates from microsoft here so let's go ahead let's just run this and let's just see what it actually gives us so here it's just running sometimes this can take a few minutes depending on your internet connection and the amount of updates of course uh, but we should be getting that soon and seems done so let's go ahead and let's take a look at the update list values here so we can see there are quite a few driver updates to install here, which is perfectly fine. Now let's go ahead and let's just shrink this a little bit. Now let's say you didn't want to do drivers. Now when I do my server updates, I do not want to do driver updates. So what I usually do is I do a not category and I do drivers here. So if we actually run just this line here, we're actually going to see that this actually comes back empty. It's going to take another couple minutes here just to do that lookup. Um, but we should see it actually come back just blank. We should just see a, another prompt and nothing above it. And there it is. So we can see that our last one was not category drivers and we didn't get any drivers and we are back at our prompt here. In our case, because it's a Windows 10 box, we will have to do drivers just to be able to actually demonstrate an example here. And what I like to typically do afterwards is I like to make sure that there's updates. So we're going to say if update list dot count is equal to zero, we're going to go ahead and we're just going to say write output no updates. And then we're going to have an else. So if the update list has a count that is not equal to zero, which means it's going to be one or higher, we will go ahead and we will do, perform the updates. Now you can either do a for each list here, or you can actually just decide to do them all. What I like to do is I just like to do them all typically. Um, but in this case, when we actually go ahead and run it, I will be running something very, very specific. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a get w get dash w u install and then here what i like to do is do an accept all so it's going to accept all the terms here we want to make sure that's from microsoft update what i like to also add is the ignore reboot so this way it installs all the updates first before rebooting we also want to add the wis hidden parameter here this way it finds any hidden updates as well and then a little thing that we need to add is the download parameter and also the install parameter we want to make sure that we download those updates and also install them and then let's go ahead and we are going to then go ahead and we're going to pipe that to out dash file and we're going to have the append flag here the append parameter here and then the file path is we're going to store our log path here. All right. And what that's going to do is that's going to go ahead and just install all the updates that we found there. So that's going to be great. Um, now, in our case, what we actually want to do is I want to run a specific update since we are just doing drivers on this machine here. So what we're just going to add here is we can actually add a title so you can actually specify so if you're doing a for each loop you can actually specify a title here and we can actually do a update list and we're going to specify the first one and do the title let me just go ahead and let me just check what driver that is um yep that seems like it should be a driver that should be fine to run here so if we actually go ahead and we run this we will actually see some action happening at the bottom here. You're going to see it download. You're going to see it install. You're going to see all of these. And you can already see that it created our log file. Well, that is great as well. So this might just take a few moments. So let's just wait a little bit here and see that progress. 
and there it is so we're going to see that we do see that it actually does have a restart required we can even see that a reboot is required but do it manually so by default because we did this ignore reboot it is actually giving us that the reboot is required but do it manually and if we go to our update log we will actually see that the update was accepted we downloaded and we installed it it gives us the name of the update the size of the update as well now if it was a windows update it would even give give you a kb article to go along with it which is amazing um, and no matter how many updates you actually do here it will actually have all of them listed so that is awesome now what i like to do afterwards because we did this ignore reboot what i like to do is i like to add a reboot variable here at the end and we're going to do a get w u reboot status we just add a little silent to it and we're just going to run that and we're going to see our reboot value is equal to true and then we're going to do an if reboot so if the reboot is equal to true we're going to do a get w u reboot status and then auto reboot now i'm not going to run this because this is going to actually reboot the machine and of course the video will not really work um, but if you run this, it will actually auto reboot your machine. Now, the reason why I do this instead of just letting it reboot on its own, this is pretty much just in case you want to do any other logging. And what I really like to do is before the computer actually reboots is I like to send myself an email with this log file. And now, of course, you can do the logging to an elastic or a seam, like a centralized logging system. And this way you can have it all there. Right now, I just have it sending me an email. So I like to save the reboot for a bit later, get all the updates done, store it to a file for my log, and then send it to myself so I can see exactly what was done. Now, of course, you can also easily filter these updates. So the only thing is there is a little trick to this. So if we do a get w list Microsoft updates, this is gonna get us all the updates. We've already seen this. We know that it works correctly. So we're just going to wait a little bit here and just see our results. And then we're going to keep manipulating with it. So we can already see a reboot required. Do you want to do it now? Default is, is no. Uh, we're just going to add no there. But we don't really want to do an up, an up um, a reboot here. Now we can see that we have one Dell update and then all the other ones are Intel updates. Now if we actually go ahead and we piped this to where title dash like is star del star, we will actually see that this does not work. So if we actually run this here, you will see we will actually get nothing from this. So let's just wait it out and let's just see what our results here. So as you can see, we just got the reboot is required and that's because we just installed an update here. It found nothing. So what we actually need to do is if you ever want to filter your updates, you actually need to filter it with the update list after you get all your updates. So let's go ahead and let's do the, the W list here. Now with the get W list, you can also ignore reboot here as well. This way you just don't get that prompt, especially if you're running this as a scheduled task, which is what I would typically do if I'm trying to automate these updates. So there we go. Reboot is required, but do it manually. And then what I would do is update list where idle dash like, and then you can do Dell here. And then we can see if we run this, we get all the Dell updates here. Now what we can actually do, now you're gonna see that it has multiple and that is quite okay. That's because we did reset the list. So if we actually run all of these three things here, we will see that we only have the one Dell update. Um, let's go ahead and let's run this. And we're actually gonna run the entire script afterwards just so you guys can actually see that it does work and we can set up even the for each example. This way you guys can see what that looks like. And then all we're gonna do is actually do the update list 
is equal to update list where title is equal to Dell. So all I'm performing is that Dell update. And then what we can do is in the else statement, if you guys ever wanted to, you can do a for each update in update list. Now, of course, we're only doing one update, but you can definitely have multiple in here. And you can paste your get w install. And then you can just add a title here and do update dot title. And this way you can filter what kind of updates you want to do as well. Now, there are other ways to actually filter your get w list. So before we actually uh, go and show that, let's go ahead and let's just run this entire script here, except for the reboot portion, because I don't want to do the reboot just yet. So let's go ahead and let's run this here. Now this is going to perform that Dell update. So we're going to actually see more data get added to this file here. So we're just going to wait a little bit. And there it is. So there is our Dell. So we can see that it's been accepted, it's been downloaded and it's been installed. So we can actually see in this log file, we have installed two different updates at different times. We can see the size of the updates, like I said, and we can still see the title. So one of the things that you can also do is you can specify a lot more details in this get w list. So if we do get w list, you can say not category, like we've seen before, you can specify drivers, security updates, but you can also specify to get specific updates. So if we do root categories, so let's say you only wanted to do the automated updates purely for critical updates, definition updates, and security updates. This way you're only installing what is truly needed to be secure on your environment. You don't really want to install anything else. You don't want to install the service packs, uh, the updates, the drivers, the feature packs, the language packs, or anything like that. You only really want to stay anything that Microsoft deems as critical, anything that they deem as a definition update, which I would definitely recommend at least doing the critical updates, the security updates, and the definition updates, because that will be really, really important to keep your systems secure. So make sure that you're at least doing those, and that will give you a little bit more security. But as always, I always recommend setting up two scheduled tasks. So one scheduled task will run basically getting the list, and then you just output that list to a file, send that to yourself. And this way you can validate what updates will actually be done on the system. And then when you have another scheduled task that actually reads that list and performs those updates. And then this way, if there's anything on that list that you don't want to get done, just go ahead and remove it from the list. Once you receive your email, you see the update and you're like, I don't really want to get that done. You just remove it from your list. You can easily manage that through CSV files or in a database if you really want to get a little bit deeper with the automation. But that is really how I use the PS Windows Update module um, in a nutshell, pretty much. If you guys would like to see more with the PS Windows Update module, let me know. You can definitely go a little bit deeper. We can create maybe a more robust script for updates or if you guys have any other commandlets that you guys would like me to share with the community that you guys find useful in your job or in your home lab please let me know in the comment section down below with just the commandlet and then the module that it comes from if it's not a default commandlet and please hit that subscribe button hit that like button also hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out and i will see you guys on the next video